The other day, I was talking to a friend and she asked me, Krishna, what is machine learning? I keep hearing about it everywhere. I spent around 5 to 10 minutes explaining to her, post which we moved on to more interesting topics. This gave me the idea that if I make a podcast in a layman's language, it may benefit more people. <coughs> no, 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 don't be alarmed. I will do my best to keep it as simple as possible, even to a fault, so that you can understand and brag to your friends. So, before we jump into the nitty gritties, let us look at some real life examples where we are exposed to machine learning. Back in the 90s, when internet became accessible in India, a friend of mine took me to a browsing center and introduced me to the world of internet. To those of you who have no idea on what a browsing center is, it was a place where you go to access internet. <gasps> there would be 5 to 20 computers and you had to wait for one to be free and pay by the hour. I was fascinated at how easily one could contact someone in the other part of the world through email. Pretty soon, I had made a couple of email friends and I used to frequent the browsing center. Every week, I used to get a few emails from my e-friends and there used to be a couple of marketing mails. With time, the ratio increased, tipping onto the latter. Very soon, emails started having another folder next to inbox, which was called the junk folder and I could label a mail as a junk mail. The next time a similar mail came, it automatically moved it to the junk folder. It was not always reliable and I would have to check the junk folder as well to ensure I didn't miss any of my friend's replies. Now, speeding up to the 2020, things haven't changed much. I still occasionally receive a mail from someone whose rich uncle had died leaving a million dollar to be claimed and if I gave my bank details for the transfer, I would receive 60% of the loot. <laughs> yeah, that's a spam mail delivered in my inbox. The difference between the 90s and 2020 is that the classification accuracy has improved. However, coming back to our discussion, who's moving the relevant emails to the inbox and the junk to the spam folder? Is it some individual who is scanning through each and every mail and moving them? Surely no. This is machine learning under play. We will see how in some time. A few years back, I happened to use my Indian credit card in an international airport. Within 5 minutes, I got a call to ascertain if the transaction was fraudulent. I was quite impressed at the speed of response. Was anyone manually monitoring each and every transaction and labeling them as fraud? Absolutely not. Again, it is machine learning at play. We will see how a little later. If you watch any of the streaming services like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you see recommendations based on your viewing history. Is someone manually tagging the videos? Impossible. Mission learning at your service. Now that we have seen a few examples of machine learning in real life, let's understand one definition of machine learning. Machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence which enables machines to learn from past data without someone having to explicitly program. If you have come with me this far, you now know enough to identify a machine learning application when you see one. Let us now bite into the meat or if you are a vegetarian, bite into the tofu of machine learning. We can generally classify machine learning into these three types. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. Let us look at supervised learning. Let us go back to our first example of spam emails. We agreed that a superhuman isn't classifying each of our mails. So what's happening? 
When a spam mail first lands in your inbox and you move it to junk, that is, label it as spam, this information is recorded. The information of the non-spam mail in your inbox is also recorded. Think of it as being recorded in a spreadsheet where each row is reserved for one instance of a mail of all the mails that goes around the world. Each column in the spreadsheet is reserved for a unique feature. A feature can be attributed to some characteristics of the email. For example, each word in the email could be split into columns, the sender's email ID as another column, etc. When more emails are added to the spreadsheet, the columns also increases with whichever unique feature that exists in them. Each of these emails are also marked as a spam or a non-spam, that is 1 or 0. Now this metric also has each cell filled with 0 or 1. If the feature exists in that email, that cell is marked as 1 and if not, as 0. So now we have millions of emails marked as spam and not a spam with columns as 1 or 0. Now all the program needs to do is study this pattern and for a new email predict if this is a spam or a non-spam. Therefore, in supervised learning, the machine learning program needs a set of labeled data to train itself so as to predict a future instant. What's critical to note here is a programmer isn't writing specific code to differentiate every condition of a spam or a non-spam. The machine is learning by itself through its algorithm by studying the data. There are two subcategories to supervised learning, classification and regression. Classification is like the email example which we discussed where the goal is to classify this or that. Regression is where the goal is to arrive at a specific number. For example, what would be tomorrow's stock price? Now let us go on to unsupervised learning. The second example which I mentioned where the bank had called me the moment I made a transaction outside India is an example of unsupervised machine learning. Here there was no prior labeling done for the machine learning algorithm. Yet, how did the algorithm identify this particular transaction? The algorithm looked at patterns from the data and found this transaction to be an outlier. Therefore, it flagged this off as a potential suspicious transaction. Specifically, the algorithm looked at anomaly detection. One of the main difference between supervised and unsupervised learning is that in unsupervised learning, there is no prior labeled data and the machine tries to find patterns from the input data. The third example that we saw also falls under unsupervised learning. When we watch certain videos, the algorithm formed patterns of association and recommended us new videos whose feature closely matched with our preferences. Now, wouldn't it be awesome or scary if a drone could fly all by itself from place A to place B and land without any manual intervention? Now, that's reinforcement learning for you. You can visualize reinforcement learning as some kind of a mathematical equation where every time a drone takes off, you reward the program 5 points and every time it fails, you punish it by minus 10 points. You also set the overall goal of the program to earn the maximum reward. So the algorithm keeps modifying the weights of the equation and keeps iterating till it identifies how to maximize the overall reward. And in this case, the implication of this behavior would be for the drone to take off and land without crashing.
In reinforcement learning, the algorithm uses past feedback and explores new tactics to maximize the final payoff. This is akin to how we modify the behavior of kids through carrot and stick method. If you have come this far, you really need an applause. You can now officially brag that you conceptually understand machine learning. If you want to take your vocabulary to the next notch, then read up on confusion metrics, train data, test data, neural network, deep learning, NLP and computer vision. These will give you further breadth and depth on machine learning concepts. If this interested you and if you would want me to talk more on these topics, then do comment. If you think this video could help someone, then please do share it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so.